हेलो स्टूडेंट्स साई राम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द पार्ट फोर विच इज लास्ट पार्ट और लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर नंबर सेवन गेटिंग टू नो अबाउट प्लांट्स इन प्रीवियस सेशन आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द टू इम्पॉर्टेंट फंक्शंस ऑफ लीव्स विच आर फोटोसिंथेसिस एंड ट्रांसपरेशन फोटोसिंथेसिस इज द प्रोसेस इन विच ग्रीन लीव्स मेक्स प्लांट्स फूड बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस यूजिंग कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll then transpiration is the process in which leaves gives out excess water in the form of water vapor which is known as transpiration after studying about stems and leaves we will now study about the flowers flower is mainly the reproductive part of the plant different parts of the plants are petals sepals pistils and stamen and here children pistil is a female reproductive part of flower and stamen is male reproductive part of the flower now we will study about each of these parts in detail first we will study about the petals so children here the colored part of the flower is petals can you see these color parts pink one yellow one orange one these are the called as petals of the flower now next we'll see about sepals sepals are small leaf like structure just below the petals the outermost green color part that encloses bud are known as sepals here now we'll see about the sepals these these green color part of the flower just below the uh, petal uh, petals are sepals here we can see the sepals yeah yes now i hope you understood the difference between the sepals and the petals okay now let's move forward we will study now about pistils and stamens as i told you earlier that pistil is a female reproductive part of a flower and stamen is a male reproductive part of a flower your children the diagram which is which i have shown you is a flower in which i have sh uh, shown you the pistil over here and stamen over here now children uh, first we'll study about the stamen in detail here it is shown the diagram of a flower in which the parts of the stamen are shown stamen as i told you stamen is a male part of the flower it has pollen grains in it or we can say that it is the pollen producing part of the flower here children this is stamen this is a diagram of stamen yes it has two parts and this part is known as anther and this this is called as filament anther produces pollen grains yes now let's talk about the pistil we'll see now just now we have seen what are the stamens stamens are the male reproductive part of the flower which produces pollen grains in that we have seen um, anther and the filament are the two parts of the stamen and that produces pollen grains now next we'll see about the female reproductive part here children pistil is a female reproductive part it consists of stigma style and ovary if you will see over here this is the diagram of pistil it has two or uh, three parts this upper part is we call this as stigma this is style and this is ovary now let's move forward okay now we'll study about the ovary ovary is the lowermost or swollen part of the pistil here this is ovary children here this is ovary if you can open this the ovary will look like this here from inside and you will notice that there are small bead like structures over here these are called as ovules here you here you can see the small bead like structures these are ovules right now yes children 
yes children you can see in this trigram the small beads like structure inside the ovary this we call these them as ovules yes now children as we have seen that your female reproductive mm -hmm. part the still is a female reproductive part of a flower which consists of sigma style and ovary then we have seen the male reproductive part of the flower which we call them as stamen it it consists of two parts anther and filament anther produces pollen grains yes now next we'll see here mm -hmm. now next we'll see how fertilization happens in a flower okay yes as i told you that anthers are anthers produces yeah as i told you anthers produ produces pollen grains here yeah, children these pollen grains are then these pollen grains are transferred from now we'll study about the ovary ovary is the lowermost or swollen part of the pistil here yeah, this is ovary children here yeah? this is ovary if you can open this the ovary will look like this here yeah? from inside and you will notice that there are small bead like structures over here these are called as ovules here you here you can see the small bead like structures these are ovules yes children you can see in this trigram the small beads like structure inside the ovary this we call these them as ovules yes now children as we have seen that here female reproductive mm -hmm. part this still is a female reproductive part of a flower which consists of sigma style and ovary then we have seen the male reproductive part of the flower which we call them as stamen it it consists of two parts anther and filament anther produces pollen grains yes now let, let's move forward we will now try to understand how fertilization happen in flower okay as i told you anthers are the pollen producing part of the flower so pollen grains are produced in the anther here here the pollen grains are produced in anther then these pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma of the flower which is a female reproductive part which is also a part of pistil now how this is done children this how this transfer is done this transfer is done by the help of wind or some insects like house fly or butterflies so here children pollen grains are transferred from anther to the stigma then the next is these uh, pollen grains from stigma they are transferred through to the ovary through style now it will reach to the ovary in ovary x are present here as i have shown you the small small x yeah x are present and that's how ovules present in the ovary will turn into seeds after fertilization and then ovary will turn into your fruit this is how children the fruit is produced as a product of fertilization here children after fertilization ovary will swell it will gradually become bigger and bigger in size and it will turn into a fruit now children this will see wow will one will see one more example here in this example i have shown you the mango flowers first the pollen grains from the anthers will be transferred to the stigma of the flower then from the stigma these pollen grains will reach to the ovary then in the ovary fertilization will happen where the pollen grains are will be fertilized will fertilized will fertilize the x present in the ovary and after fertilization the ovary will swell it will gradually become bigger and bigger in size and it will turn into this delicious mango fruit right and the ovules will turn into seeds okay so this is how fertilization happens and now children after studying about stem leaves and flower now we will study about the roots okay 
now here children as we all know that roots help in holding the plant firmly into the soil roots absorbs water and mineral from the soil and then the the stem transport these water and minerals to the different parts of the plant there are two different types of root systems are there tap root system and fibrous root, uh, root system in tap root system there is one prominent and long root which we call as main root and a bunch of smaller lateral or side roots that that grows from the main root so children here I, here i have shown you the diagram of the tap root in this tap root there is one main root here you can see which is further divided into the lateral roots like this yes so these roots this type of roots uh, root system is known as tap root system next we'll see the next type of uh, root system which is fibrous root system in this type of root system all the roots directly emerge from the base of the plant they do not have main root Yeah, children. You can see if you see this diagram. In this diagram, all the roots they are directly emerging from the stem, like this. See, they are not having main root. Yes. So this type of uh, root system is known as fibrous root system. This is also another example of fibrous root system. So children, we can say that in tap root system, there is one main root. which is further divided into lateral roots and in fibrous root there is no main root and the, all the roots the emerge directly from the base of the plant now next is children just by looking at the leaves of different plants can you tell me about which kind of root it has yes children we have some identification uh, system by looking at the leaves we can tell that it has either a tap root system or fibrous root system let's study about this children if the leaves have have reticulate venation here it is shown this is this is an example of reticulate venation this is uh, this leaf shows reticulate venation and see children if the leaves have reticulate venation then the roots will have here the tap root the, or we can say the root uh, the ro uh, roots of this uh, reticulate venation leaves will be will having tap root here like this see we can see as we can see here the one main root is there and which is further divided into lateral roots here this is the main root so children we can say that in uh, the plants which have reticulate venation in their leaves they will have tap root system exactly now now in the when the leaves have parallel venation here it is uh, the diagram of the leaf which is having parallel venation if the plant is having parallel venation in that case that plant will have fibrous root you can see here this diagram and this root fibrous roots they are directly emerging from the stem and there is no main root yes so we can say that in parallel venation or if the plant have parallel venation in the leaves that plant will have fibrous fibrous root system yes so here we can conclude that Here, reticulate venation means tap root system, and parallel venation means fibr fibrous root system. Okay, now children, here you uh, after studying this, you can say that uh, by just looking at the leaves, you uh, now you can tell me, uh, tell me or others about the which type of root they have. I hope children, you understood this. Now next is your children. Uh, there are some plants. or some trees which have aerial roots like this banyan tree is having yes i i have i hope children you have seen like this aerial roots and banyan tree this kind of roots are known as aerial roots yes so children i hope all of you understood this whole chapter chapter number 7 getting to know about the plants here children i'm ending this session over here till then goodbye children and take care